The problems in example 16 are a great way to put the integrals, uh, the definite integrals properties into action. And they're quite popular on the exam as well. So for problem number 16, we're given three pieces of data. And they're all about the functions f and g. Now we don't know anything particular about the formulas for f and g, but we are given that the integral from negative two to five of f of x dx is equal to four, the integral from negative two to five of g of x is equal to nine, and then the integral from negative two to zero of f of x is equal to two. And we're asked a bunch of questions about them. Okay, now for starters, we get a simple one like a, which says, what's the integral of six times f of x minus 2 times g of x dx. Okay, We're going to put our properties into play, and I'm going to break this down. But the one thing I am going to tell you is if you, once you see what the answer is after we break everything down, and you can get to that answer directly from this without having to do the breakdown, that's okay. You don't have to show the breakdown because mentally you're still using the properties. Now, one of the properties that we talked about in the previous video was about how if we are adding or subtracting two terms, we can break that one expression into two expressions involving the definite integral. And that's what we're going to do here. We see subtraction. So we can make this the integral from negative 2 to 5 of 6 f of x dx minus the integral from negative 2 to 5 of 2 g of x dx. We broke one integral up into two. That's one of our properties. We're allowed to do that as long as we're adding or subtracting. We could not do that if it was multiplying or dividing, but because we're subtracting, we're good to go. Another one of our properties is that if we have a coefficient, then we can move that coefficient out in front of the integral. So this six and this two both get to move in front of the integral. That's a property that is allowed through the definite integral. So let's do that. We have, 6 times the integral from negative 2 to 5 of f of x dx minus 2 times the integral from negative 2 to 5 of g of x dx. Now this is important that we've gotten the 6 and the 2 out of there because now we can do some substitution. We have 6 times the integral from negative 2 to 5 of f of x dx. That was given to us up here. That's 4. So by substitution, this is just going to be 6 times 4. And then we could use substitution again because we also have an integral from negative 2 to 5 for g. That's equal to 9. So we have minus 2 times 9. 6 times 4 is 24. 2 times 9 is 18. So that works out to be 6. 24 minus 18 is 6. And if you can go right from here to one of these steps down there, that's great. Go right ahead and do so. You don't have to show the breakdown, especially if you're just doing it mentally. Right. So there's a classic case of using our definite integral properties. Another one of our properties can be used with part B. We have the integral from 0 to 5 of fx dx. Now up here we were given the integral from negative 2 to 5 of fx. And we were also given the integral from negative 2 to 0. We were not given the integral from negative, excuse me, from 0 to 5, but we can find it using the whole sum is, uh, the whole is equal to the sum of its part property. Okay, so what do we know here? We know that if we go from negative 2 all the way to 5 of f of x dx, that's going to be equal to the integral from negative 2 to a cutoff point, and our cutoff point is going to be 0. All right, so we're not going from negative 2 all the way to 5, we're going from negative 2 just to 0 of f of x dx. So that's one part, and we have to add to it the next part. The next part needs to begin where the previous part ended means that our low bound is now going to be 0. So we have the integral from 0 to our ending spot, which is 5, right? Negative 2 we start at, 5 we end at, of f of x dx. This is barely on the screen here, so get that you know, stuck it in. Good. Okay, now keep in mind what we have here. The integral from negative 2 to 5 of f of x, that was given to us. That's 4. So we have 4 equals the integral from negative 2 to 0 was also given to us. That's 2. 2, all right, plus our unknown. Well, let me you want to use n, because we've already used x. All right, well, what's our unknown? Well, what number plus 2 is equal to 4? Exactly. So this integral has to be equal to 2.